Alberto, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I feel like most people romanticize making their hobby, their career. And so I'm curious to know if you ever feel like BJJ is work now, or if you feel the effects of burnout start to creep in, or if you've ever felt the effects of burnout start to creep in. Um, that's a great, a great question. I tell people all the time that jujitsu for me, one day out of the week feels like work. So it's a job and I go every day and then, um, there's certain times where I'm tired or I'm, my patience is low or whatever. We're humans. Right. And so you're like, Hey, I'd rather be watching Netflix, but, uh, out of the six, seven days that I'm there one day, I feel like that. Um, so I can't think of too many people that feel that way. And then there's often many times where I'll be sitting on the mat or standing on the mat, walking around, helping students. And then I'll just realize, like have a aha moment. I'm like, holy shit, I'm at work right now. This is (laughs) work. This is super cool. (laughs) I'm so happy and so blessed. So, um, yeah, you know, burnout's real. Uh, when you do something like over and over and over for years, um, I think that's what separates people that are great and people that are just good is the people that can be consistent and to can show up every day. You know, I I like to say, if you can't bring your A game, bring your B game. If you can't bring your B game, bring your C game, but you're there and giving your best at what you can do at that day. Oh, so just show up and just do it. Yeah. 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 Like not, not trying to wait for everything to be perfect for you to, so you can't be consistent without per, or you can't, you can't be consistent if you're expecting perfection every time you're, you're showing up, right? Yeah, I think that uh, you set realistic expectations and you're like, hey, like today I just don't have it. I'm exhausted. Um, you know, I'm not going to be the best coach today because of my emotions or feelings I'm going through or I'm tired or burnt. My, I'm experiencing some sort of burnout, but I'm here and I'm going to do my best and, and uh, I'm going to bring my B game, or my C game. And sometimes those end up being like you... So you, you might have an expectation like, oh, this is going to be a tough day, but then you help somebody and you're like, man, like this was a great day or you have a good role and you do something that was really fun. You like, so, um, yeah, not having expectations and, um, not, you know, if you're a perfectionist, then you're probably not going to last long. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think at least you might have, uh, you have to deal with a lot of stress. So I think it's good to have realistic ex- expectations. All right. Do you think that's something that being a black belt in judo and jujitsu is that something those martial arts have taught you is that like it's not going to be perfect every day just keep showing up and that's helped you in business on the business side of things um yeah i I think it's i think doing martial arts uh doing has definitely taught me that right because you you can definitely relate to rolling with certain people because some days you're going to roll with a certain partner and, you know, let's say you get the better of this person the majority of the time. But then that day, that guy just had that right amount of pre-workout <laughs> <laughs> and you're dealing with, you, you know, you is your third day, third time training that day uh-huh. and uh, your knee is sore or your neck is sore and you don't have that A game. You have, you're bringing your C game and that guy might catch you. Right. right so, right. It's a, it could hurt the ego and especially like earlier on when you're just training jujitsu in the beginning, especially when you're, you know, really, um, learning how to live with your ego Mm -hmm. and, um, it's difficult, but then over time you realize to put things, put things in perspective and Hey, I showed up today. I was exhausted and, and I still did my best. That sounded like a very specific story, by the way. <laughs> I'm not naming any Who names. Was that? Who was that? <laughs> Who hurt you, Alperro? <laughs> I guess that was just um, relating it back to jiu-jitsu, I guess. Yeah, in right, right, certain right. ways that uh, jiu-jitsu has taught me. Yeah. You know, I think life in general, but uh, jiu-jitsu has been part of my life for 20 plus years. So. Dang. Right, yeah. Dang. Yeah. What what so you said like there's that one day that you mm-hmm. show up like where you just know it's gonna happen that you, you might be experiencing some stress or something or mm-hmm. it feels like work. What yeah. is what is different on that day compared to the other days? Hmm. That's a good question. Like it you may or may not know what it is, right? Like um I've I've come to realize that like we have certain feelings or certain emotions and We always want to put a reason why we have it. And sometimes there is no reason or it might not be worth it to search for the reason 
because it just, it's a waste of time, you know? And, and so you're like, Hey, today I'm feeling sad. Today I'm feeling down. Today I'm feeling anxious. Today I'm feeling stressed. Um, well, I'm feeling that way. So I'm going to have to, let's, let's live with this right now and do our best. And, you know, it could be anything. It could be, um, maybe I got some bad news on a phone call or maybe, um, I read an email before I taught class that maybe I shouldn't have read that before, or maybe I got an argument with a friend or my wife, or, you know, maybe, um, I'm dealing with nagging hip injury that's just like pissing me off because I'm like, it's never going to get better. So it could be a lot of things. It's, I don't think there's anything specific, but so sometimes there's a, you can pinpoint a reason and sometimes you can't. And I think like, if I can't find the reason why I'm feeling this way, that's okay. I'm just feeling this way and I'm going to do my best and then I, I'll come through the other end. Yeah. And then you just show up and then you did the thing and then tomorrow always comes and yeah. Yeah. Just show up. It, it sounds yeah, like it's huge. It sounds like in your previous explanation that oftentimes just showing up actually helps make you feel better at the end. Right. Yeah. Because you, some, something may happen during that session that, um, you know, that it's that aha moment or yeah. that, uh, you know, that, there's a, a, uh, a moment that moves you in a certain way, whether it's somebody got something finally and you're like, yeah. Oh shit, like this is why I do this, you know? Yeah. And it makes everything kind of puts things into perspective, I should say. Totally. And usually for the most part, um, and I've actually learned this with, you know, doing jujitsu as a profession and teaching and being very busy is let's say I'm done. I got my workout in for the day. I taught class, I trained, and then I, maybe I did another workout or what I've been working on the computer for three hours. And then I'm about to, I'm driving to the gym to go teach the remaining like five, six classes of the day. And it's usually on the way to the gym. That's kind of that moment where I'm like, holy crap, like, how am I going to do this today? Like, I feel exhausted. I'm tired. Uh, And then I've come to realize like, life is always like this, right? You know, you got, mm -hmm. uh, Peaks and valleys, valleys yeah. right? I'm at a valley right now mm-hmm. and that's fine. Like you're at this valley, but I know that once I show up and I start to coach, especially when I'm coaching the kids, like I'm so present with the kids. Like I have no time to think about my stress or how tired I am. Mm-hmm. And then that usually leads into the adults classes. But, um, when you're at this part of the, the valley or the, what well, you know, the highs and the lows, you're at the low, you're thinking I can't do it. But I remind myself, like, no matter how low you are, there's going to be a high. So you're like, okay, I'm here now. But I, once I get to the gym and once I start doing my thing, like I'm going to get back up here yeah, and then allow myself to go back down right at the end of the day. So I've, I've learned that, uh, especially like while doing like, um, like, uh, ultra marathons and Mm -hmm. Ironman training where you're going to feel like shit and then just keep showing up, keep doing it. And then eventually that high comes. Yeah. I feel like I've, I've felt that on a, I guess on a, uh, a longer or bigger, not bigger scale, uh, in the sense that it would diminish what it is that you just said, but like, Mm. uh, over longer periods of time in jujitsu is like, yeah, you're the hammer. Sometimes you're the nail. Of course. And you know, I find that if I ever go to the gym and I just get smoked for, a couple weeks at a time, I, I pay really, really close attention to those moments because I know very soon after I will hit that peak. Right. And then I'll start to catch people that were catching me or, you know, I'll, I'll start to feel better about certain positions or whatever it is. And, and I think that's really, um, it is wise to recognize those moments, both in jujitsu and in life or business or whatever it is. It's like, yeah. it's never going to be just a straight line across. It's always peaks and valleys, like you said. Yeah. And I wonder if that's why like a lot of people quit jujitsu. Like yeah. maybe right. they're getting their ass kicked and they're at that valley. Yeah. And then just like, you know what? Like they don't see that light at the end of the tunnel. And they're just expecting like this linear progression of, yeah. Yeah. I noticed that with like, um, that's what, that's one of the things I think co- like competition taught me was, um, like not waiting for circumstances to be perfect in order to do the thing. Right. And like, yeah. there's a point in time last year where I was competing like almost every week or so. And it's like, if I, if I'm, <laughs> if I'm going into a competition expecting, like my mindset to be perfect or expecting my mm. physically to feel perfect or anything. 
um, then I should just like not compete. Right. It's, um, and I think that's one of those mistakes we make sometimes is like, is just allowing the risk of failure or like knowing that things aren't going to be perfect. Um, and that just prevents us from even starting in the first place. Yeah. Right. I Um, think that that's a great point. And I'm, that's like, so cool that competition has taught you that. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Um, I was, I was going to say though, um, where was I going with that? And then like perfection, like if you allow what people say, I'm a perfectionist, right? Like, Oh, things have to be perfect for me. You know, I've had students that are, that are like that, right? They're like, they want to do the technique perfect every single time. Right. Or they want, um, they want to know all the details and they got it, or they want to know the names and the, 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 understand the nomenclature and the history and like who made this technique famous or something like that. I'm going Mm -hmm. a little obviously extreme, but um, I think a lot of times that people use perfectionism as an excuse not to do something that's scary. Exactly. That's the thing, right? It's like an excuse. And like the, the kind of flipping point for me was like recognizing that like that doesn't have to be the case. Yeah. And like in your case with like owning the gym and everything, that's why it resonates so much with it. Cause it sounds like you're just like, you're not expecting things to be perfect. You're showing up and just doing it. Right. Yeah. Which is like to do the thing, you have to do the thing. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And the thing is going to be different every single time you do it. It's right. Never right. 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 And I don't know. That's, that's the beauty of it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> do you think that's, do you think that's innate or is it, or is it taught? Um, or both. Do you think some people like are naturally predisposed to that type of mindset? Mm-hmm. Or do you think that's something that comes from certain experiences? I feel like for me, it was learned. Okay. Yeah. I think uh, it was learned for me. Yeah. Cool. How do you, how do you think you learned that? Was that, was that f- from your martial arts experience or was just that other, just growing up and maturing as a human or both? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely both. Yeah. I think, um, over time of um, just training and and jiu-jitsu obviously helps a lot in martial arts, but you know, that and, and like I always feel like I'm a student of life. So, you know, I, I like to read books or I like to have conversations with people that are experts in certain areas or other people that are in business or management or, you know, other people that they have what I want. I'm like, Hey man, like you do this amazing. Like, let's talk about that. Mm, or, yeah. um, and so I think that's really helped me a lot throughout the years, um, is having mentors in certain areas that, um, that I've learned. Do, do you get inspiration? Like for like things you do at your gym, do you get inspiration from other maybe gyms you look up to or like, I don't know how this works, but mm. do you, do you try to implement things that you see other people doing or yes, yes and no. Uh-huh. Um, Yes and no. Uh, like, um, like I see other people have to do podcasts and I'm like, man, this is like cool. Like I could just have a conversation and put it out there. Maybe somebody will listen to it and think it's cool or, you know, uh, maybe it'll help my content grow. Uh, maybe it'll help promote my gym. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I think, um, or I, I, Every time, uh, especially my wife, Keiko, uh, when we, we, we like to visit other gyms and go to coffee crew, open mats or visit whenever we're traveling. And every time we go, um, we'll pay attention to how they do things. Like, yeah, that's yeah. what I was wondering about. Like, yeah. yeah. So uh, she looks at the layout, you know, like, oh, wow, they do their, um, this is where they put their shoes or this is the color scheme they have. This is the lights. This is the TV. This is the couch. Mm. This is how the bathrooms are. And, you know, we have, um, we have a whole Google doc. Yeah. Um, oh, that's Google, cool. Google album, of all these gyms that you've been to and like the things that we like, right. The color schemes and we have, you know, mm-hmm. the room of dojo, who knows where it's going to go. But like in my head, I have like my dream gym, like yeah. my forever gym that yeah. I can retire to, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so we have all these ideas of what we want to make it. So that's just like one example. And like when I went to Axis the other day mm-hmm. or when I was in Japan recently, um, like I saw the way that he taught the class and the way that he structured his uh, curriculum. And I'm like, you know what? Like I can implement these little things, right? So um, I, one, of, one of my um, mentors when I was in the uh, restaurant industry, uh, they taught me a, it was a book. I never read the book, but he kind of told, went over like how, what he learned from it. And it's called like steal the art, mm. 
Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. art, of, yeah, like, the artist, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or is it the art? Of, no, steal the art. I think that's the name of the book. Okay. Yeah, Got I it, have yeah. to like. I want to read it, and listen to it on Audible, but like, yeah. it's like great artists steal. Yeah. Right? yeah, 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 yeah. And I think about that often. Is that you know they people say it's all been done before. Right, so you're gonna do a podcast. Now I'm gonna do a podcast, and I'm like, well, look at these guys' camera and microphone. I want to do something like this. I want to make myself. They're doing this right. I want to. I want to do something like that. Right. Yeah. So I'm gonna steal that from you. But I probably I might not buy. It. I might have might have the Sony. I might right. have the yeah. CanCon right. Right. or whatever. But yeah. um, and you guys got these ideas from somebody else. Right. right. But yeah. Everyone yeah. makes it. It's right. Like Jitsu. You do an yeah. arm bar. You make like point zero five percent your own. And yeah. That makes it your own. Right. Yeah. That, you, that yeah that's like such a good example of this thing where like i i used to so this kind of translates over to jujitsu also because mm-hmm. sometimes kind of in anything in life sometimes whenever i would see somebody doing something maybe like better than me or something mm-hmm. i'd be like well you know screw that uh like like uh that's you know, this guy's dumb or whatever. Like totally. I can do it my way. Yeah. That was me in my early twenties. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was me in my early twenties. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then like one of those big lessons I learned, um, especially carries over into jujitsu is like, like instead of rejecting, um, instead of rejecting all of that stuff, instead embrace the fact that everybody around you is doing things better than you. And like that, those are all resources now. Right. Yeah. Like, um, in training in competition like i mean I, I make friends with a lot of like the people i compete against too like even that's if cool. they even yeah. you know even if they beat you it's like you learn something from everybody and that's a big thing you just taught me i think and like it sounds like that's that's what you do too like maybe maybe you go to a gym and you're like oh this guy's doing that thing and that's cool we don't we don't have that at our gym like maybe we could do something like that or like just always improving 100 yeah, percent. yeah and i'll i'll ask questions and yeah like oh man you caught me, like you almost tapped me with this footlock and then you turned it into this. You took my back. Like, how did you do that? Yeah. You know? And, or right. so you, you teach your classes like this, like why, why do you do this? Yeah. And, and so I'll go one step yeah. further and I'll say, I think this is something that people don't talk about enough in jujitsu is like, I think a lot of people think that they can't or shouldn't learn from belts that are lower than them. Yeah. And that's so good. That's bullshit. Yeah. Like there are, Josh is a better footlocker than me. I have I've no like, thank you. I have no quarrels or qualms. I, <laughs> yeah. Listen, he spent how many, I don't know how many matches this over the last eighteen months yeah. just footlocking the world. I saw I'm 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 at, I'm at peace with that. I get it. <laughs> I'm not going to let him footlock me, but I do want to know how he does it, and yeah. I do want to learn from him. And so, like, I think that's something that Josh and I share in the morning. Is like we drill together pretty much every day, and I'm ju- I'm at peace now. And I it didn't take me. It took me until I got my brown belt really mm-hmm. to be at peace with that and be like. I could learn something from, from somebody, even white belts, right? Like yeah. whether that's what not to do or something like there's something that somebody can teach you and it's okay to learn from people who are n- not the same belt or higher. I think that a lot of people need to hear that and be at peace with that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I agree hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. It's like almost like self harming to like reject some, yeah. to reject that, <laughs> like yeah. to reject somebody teaching you something like, even if it's like a, a white belt, right? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much a white belt. I'm still, but. <laughs> uh, I agree. 100%. <laughs> That's not entirely true. Don't listen to Josh. He's not basically a white belt. Thank Just... you, Matthew. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> Sometimes I've, I've, I've told some people that the blue belt is just a glorified white belt. So <laughs> Yeah, it got, it got <laughs> the dirty. Five-stripe, the five-stripe. The five-stripe. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you know, man. But I, I, to circle back, like 100%. Um, you can learn from, you can learn from somebody who's been there for like a, a, a week Yeah, because they, they see something that you've never seen, you know, cause sometimes when you do something every day, you kind of yeah. follow a certain line, you kind of stay in your path. Uh, and it's just natural mm-hmm. because it becomes a routine. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, um, they do something or they, they ask a question. You're like, Holy moly. I never thought about it like yep. that. Right. hundred um, percent. I think that it reminds me of a yeah. quote that, um, in the beginner's mind, Anything is possible in the expert mind. Nothing is possible. Uh, uh, that's great. Yeah. Deep. <laughs> I'm sealing that. So deep. Keep it in your mind. So yeah. that everything's possible. Uh, kind of to touch more on that topic. Um, Cause like um, I've experienced this at like my own gym. Um, and this is why I like going to other gyms so much is because like um, in jujitsu specifically training, um, 
the, if you train with the same training partners over and over, you get the same look of jujitsu all mm-hmm. the time. Right. Yeah. And then like, it's hard to break that pattern. Um, so that's why I, I enjoy going to like other gyms and stuff. Um, and it, and like even the example you brought up, it takes like even the person who's been there for two weeks can break the pattern so that you yeah. like have to learn this new thing. And then you're talking about also going out to like other gyms and, and when you go there, you take things from those gyms that you can use as, um, like information for your own gym. You also, um, cause you're going like, like the coffee cruise and everything too, right? Yeah. Um, I haven't been as, as regular as I used to be, but, uh, I, I'm a hundred percent for that culture and, um, yeah, like I love it. So, yeah. yeah. Um, I was just wondering if you can talk about like, um, sort of more on that difference of, um, I guess expanding on the example of where that person who was there for two weeks could teach you a new thing. Was there anything specific you've gotten, f- f- I guess, for your jujitsu um, that you've only gotten, you think, because you went and trained at some other places or um, basically any of those moments where like the pattern was broken for you? Well, um, the most recent again was when I went, I uh, was training at Axis with Professor Watanabe Sensei and he was showing, he kind of shows the same technique throughout the whole week, but he'll add little bits and pieces. So you're kind of staying in the same um, ballpark. And he was showing how to pass butterfly guard, but he was showing a different way that I've never seen. Um, when I, I like to pass butterfly guard, I want to make the person lay down flat to use Donna hair, supine. I want them supine. <laughs> Don't get Josh excited. I, He's I have a, big... a bold cap in my <laughs> <laughs> he does he has it you that's almost, true i mean i think you could you could, I could be like your halloween costume yeah thank you that's you a compliment shave, beard. You have to shave your beard yeah that, 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 that. Uh, but i mean like here this side oh yeah if i just get like a <laughs> keep going. oh yeah it'll grow back it might be worth it he's right this, this man <laughs> <laughs> oh don't pump his tires <laughs> but okay, so you're doing a sumi geishi i'm just kidding oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I hit a i hit a beautiful tomoya nage yesterday on my buddy so Oh man, I, I had uh, I have a pretty good video of it, so I would love to share it. It's oh, amazing! Oh, send, send that. We yeah, can put send it up it on you. the screen. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, he has it on his phone, so he has to. Um, I have to remind him. No, <laughs> no egos. Send me the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Perfect. <laughs> um, so I like to pass the butterfly guard. I want to make the person flat, and then I want to pass, and that's how I've always wanted. That's how I pretty much always pass butterfly guard. Mm. Um, and then he was showing different different paths to pass the guard while they're sitting, mm. and it made me like, okay, I never never thought about passing the guard like this. And then I took, you know, I uh, filmed myself doing it so I wouldn't forget. And then I came to the this back to my dojo and I taught my students. So for me, oh, when cool. when yeah. I learn new things, especially, you know, I learn from new things from. Tons of places, right? Instructionals, other people, other dojos, watching competition video. And then I teach my students and that helps me remember. And then also helps like, cause maybe, maybe, maybe I never passed butterfly guard like that ever in my life, but maybe somebody in my gym is like, that's going to be their jam. Yeah. Right. Right. Maybe you just influence that person for the rest of their jujitsu career. Yeah. Yeah. And then all of a sudden yeah. he's going to take that and run with it and teach me something. Like, yeah. Dude, like I was trying this past the show. And then I realized I could just do this here. I was like, what the hell? Like, okay, cool, man. That's badass. That's like, very cool. Yeah. And so, it just evolves. That's very cool. Yeah. I actually, I trained at that same axis under Professor Watanabe and mm-hmm. he, he was fantastic. He was one of the coolest, most knowledgeable professors I've ever trained under. It was yeah. such a uh, unique experience being there. It was really, really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, for anybody who's going to Japan, go there. It's a, uh, it's a great place to train. So highly recommend. very cool. Very yeah. cool. Um, I want to circle back to two things. The first is what books are you reading these days? Uh, I just got done. Uh, well, I haven't been reading many books lately. I've been doing a lot of, um, books on tape or audible accounts. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> accounts. Yeah. So I, I, um, I pretty much don't listen to music in the car. I just listen to books. Okay. Um, and I really got on the kick listening to different books um, while I was training for my Ironman. Mm. I have hours to spend on the bike. So instead of listening to music, I'm going to put a book on. And then usually after like two or three hours, I hit my, I hit my threshold and yeah. I put some country music on or something. Okay. 
but I just finished A Man's Search for Meaning. Um, Victor K. Franco, I think. Oh, Victor Franco. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. 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 Franco. So that yeah. was, um, that was really, really, um, really eye opening book. It was actually. It's like a philosophy book. Yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah, he's, okay. he's a a doctor in philosophy, okay, or a psychologist actually. He's okay. a psychologist that, and this book has been referenced in like two or three of the books that I was reading, okay. listening to on tape, right? Yeah. And then I saw something the other day on Instagram, and it was, um, the Iron Cowboy, um, Mr. Lawrence. Um, I can't think of his hmm. full name at the moment, but. His nickname is Iron Cowboy. He did like 101 Ironman triathlons in 101 days. Oh, fuck. Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Wait, he did 101 <laughs> triathlons in 101 days? 101 Ironman triathlons uh-huh. in 101 days. Holy. Wait, just like every day? Every day for 100. He His goal was to do 100. Uh-huh. Um, James Lawrence is okay. his name. Okay. The Iron Cowboy. You can find him on Instagram. Now he's a motivational speaker. Uh-huh. Um, but I saw one of his motivational speakers and he was talking about this book uh-huh. and I was like, this is like the third or fourth time I heard about this. I'm going to have to listen to it. Yeah. Right? But, um, to go back to the iron cowboy. Yeah. He, uh, he was supposed to do a hundred and then he's like, you know what? Like I want to prove to everyone that no matter how exhausted, how tired, how messed up you are, you can always do one more. <laughs> and so he's like, I'm gonna do 101. Shit. Yeah. So That's absurd. <laughs> check it out. It's, uh, I, he has a book, um, the iron cowboy, which was about one of his other feats that he did before the 101, mm-hmm. which was 50 Ironman triathlons in 50 States. Damn. And actually since, um, since he did the 101 in 101 days, somebody beat his record. I think it's now 105 in 105 days by, uh, Whoa. Sean Connery. I think his name is, um, I think he lives in London. Uh, damn. The, the, the James Bond actor, yeah, yeah. Is it, is <laughs> Sean Connery, uh, I, 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 Sean Connery, I think. Sean, okay, okay. I mean, right. I'm, I'm probably no, butchering his name, uh, but I, 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 I've watched some of his documentaries and I saw, uh, I was following him on Instagram and I was like, because he was doing that while I was training for my Iron. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, the book was uh, about this doctor who was um, got captured during World War II for the concentration camps, and you know. Um, just his experience in the concentration camps and then how that is a true story, true story. Okay. And how that affected his, uh, career as a psychologist. Cause uh, he had a whole manuscript. Yeah. That he just finished writing. He had it, he had it on his person while he was being taken to the, the concentration camp and they, they oh, took it from him, burned man. it, right? They, they take everything from you. Yeah. They shave you naked. Yeah. And then, so if, if, who are we, if we don't have our possessions, right? Or what is our, um, right. What like, is our motivation or what's our reason to live? Right. Yeah. What is the essence of you? If you don't have all the things you have? You yeah. Know? I'm not a doctor anymore. Right. Or I, I guess I still have the knowledge and I can still help people. And that's a skill that I can help in the camp. And sometimes mm. that might help him stay alive because he has the skill that he could help. Right. Right. Um, right. So that was kind of like the man's search for purpose. Like, yeah. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. That's deep. The, the, uh, the last time we hung out, you were training for your Ironman, mm-hmm. and I can't remember if I asked you if you have you read the book Endure yes. by Alex Hutchinson. Yeah, we were talking. About we were talking about that. Okay, yeah. all right. I wanted to make sure I touched on that because the 101 triathlons in 101 days totally fits in that mm. in that uh, in that thread. So, um, I want to pull up really fast the the guy who did the 105 because I don't think he's Sean Sean Connor. Sean Connery. What, what did I, say his name? <laughs> I hope. I hope that's his name. <laughs> I hope it's Sean. Just, I, mean, I just realized I have my phone on me, so why not? Yeah. Uh, I'm. I'm having flashbacks to the old uh, Will Ferrell SNL skits. The uh, with um, oh yeah yeah the Need More Cowbell. Well, no, with um, with the drummer, it's Jeopardy. Red he he, he plays Blues, uh, yeah. he plays Alex Trebek on. Oh yeah, on yeah, SNL. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Sean Connery is like one of the recurring characters. Oh, and just yeah. like makes will ferrell's life hell it's it's, oh, it's i said hard. it right sean conway the second time oh, sean, sean conway, conway. Sean conway. Okay. Nice. yeah 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 nice cool he's got this big old he's a uh red beard oh nice yeah he's a, he's a gnarly damn yeah. what is um what are the events real quick in a iron man triathlon what is uh swim bike and then run okay and what are the distances for those the swim is 2.4 miles okay and then the bike is 112 
and then the run is a marathon, 26.2 miles. So like, you know, an average human being that does it. Uh, <laughs> Speak, my, let's be clear. People who finish an Ironman are, be, are not the average human being, but I see, what you, I see how you qualified that. You're like, the average human being who does these. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Keep going. Within the pool. Or, yeah. <laughs> Keep going. Yeah, totally. They'll, it'll take them, you know, 15 hours to complete. That's absurd. Yeah. And that, that's pretty, that, it took me 14 and a half hours. So I was Damn. between 14 and 16 is kind of like where most people might fall into that category. And, when they, and what's this guy finishing him in? Well, I think when they're doing, they're probably in that range. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so, they're, they're, they're doing it every day. Yeah. Like, they don't have their A game. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. They're so, bringing their D and D plus game. On right, right, days. right, yeah. right. Yeah. So he's, uh, he's basically finishing the Iron Man, going to sleep, waking up. That's it. And then it's doing another Iron, Iron Man. Man. That's it. Holy they shit. have to have people, obviously, like, the, people are figuring out the logistics for him so that yeah. he can just get up, swim, bike, run, and then oh. make sure that he's getting all the calories he needs and the yeah. body work that he needs. And, yeah. Yeah. Wow. I was going to say, just from, like, a nutrition standpoint, how does how yeah, somebody handle that? That's crazy. I, I mean, I, I think... Just going like, to eat while you run. Yeah. You're, you're, you get most of the most of your nutrition on the bike. Okay. Yeah. You can, you can uh, yeah. Because it's some heavy, uh, okay. some solid food. On the oh, bike. nice. Yeah. Okay. Because you can kind of coast in some areas, I assume. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. exactly. I envision. A, I mean, yeah, I envision a plate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With his to the bike, his <laughs> fork and knife. <laughs> <piece. laughs> That's like something from Cartoon Network. Oh like, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Okay. Well. Uh, yeah, we watched, we read we were talking about that book Endure, right? Yeah. 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 I yeah. Thought that was really cool. I was we'll listen to that a lot while while riding my bike. It's it's both jaw dropping and inspirational to to <laughs> to hear those stories, or hear yeah. or read those stories. It's just like I can't believe some of these people do these things. It's you know climb Mount Everest with no oxygen, free dive hundreds of feet, mm-hmm. you know with no tank, uh, run. 101 you know iron man triathlons in 101 days stuff like that just like it's amazing to me how far the human body can go and how quickly the brain will shut it off to protect it Mm -hmm. it's like ridiculously low level it seems so did you uh you should watch if you haven't already the that new documentary on netflix which one naiad I had. Um, what is that about? It's about uh, an ultra marathon swimmer. Okay. That um, her last name is Nyad. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. And she did this, I believe, in the mid in the early two thousands. She was like she fin- did it when she was sixty four. She swam from Cuba to florida oh i heard about that yeah. wasn't she in like a Dang. shark cage too or something when she like... first tried it in her 20s she was in a shark cage and she didn't accomplish it and then like she already had like multiple uh long distance swims that uh-huh. were like records and she was uh she was famous and then she became a, a sports announcer but then when she was in her 60s she's like i want to go back and i never accomplished that swim that i wanted to do and then she, when she did it, like she tried like three or four times and failed. Um, and, but she wouldn't swim with a shark tank because in the world of marathon swimming, that would not qualify. Why? Oh, uh, there's certain, like there's certain things that you cannot do or, or it would be considered like an aided swim. Uh, you can't uh, yeah. wear a wetsuit. That's one. Okay. Um, you cannot touch another human being. Okay. Um, I don't know. There's other ones. Yeah. But like, those are like huh. some big ones right there. Like, right. She wanted it to be like legit. 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 Yeah. 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 But she did it. So she swam for 60 hours straight or like 58 hours straight. You know, no sleep. Damn. Just. Yeah. So, that's wild. Yeah. I think the, um, I think that's like one of the gifts that we have is spending our life to, or at least a good portion of our life, like getting to know what our, human body can do yeah, yeah what our capabilities are yeah yeah and you like hit the limit i think we talked about this before too about like who was the first person to like hit a four minute mile four minute mile and then like, like roger the next thing you know like everybody's Madison. hitting a like yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 we do that with ourselves too we like find one limit and mm-hmm. then we just like okay well i can do that what can i do next right yeah 
Yeah. Stories like that that make the one day out of seven that you feel a little crappy going to the kids' class feel a little more manageable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. This is the hardest thing that I have to do today. Yeah. I am like, like – Yeah. Yeah. Luxury. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to keep perspective sometimes. Yeah. yeah. I think the next, the next, uh, that they've been trying to do for years, which is in that book is the two, two, two hour, two hour marathon. marathon right? Yeah. So not, did Kipchoge do that? But it was assisted, right? It may assisted. have been assisted. Yeah. So yeah. it didn't count. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But they, I think they were just saying like, can we create a bubble or a, can we create an environment that right. will allow this to actually happen? Right. And they right. did. Yeah. Right. Even though right. it wasn't, um, it wasn't didn't count as like a record right it's, it's like the you know like, so it, if the conditions were accurate, like this yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. The, okay so now we know if the conditions are like this so let's see if we can create that in a yeah. environment like right. the right day if we're on the right day with oh, the humidity yeah. right. and the wind and all totally these things weird. are perfect yeah you know the um yeah. The, yeah there's people that are right there yeah two right. hours and two minutes that's yeah. wild so wild. That's funny. I also said that. I was like, oh, yeah, that was assisted, though. Yeah. Good job, Kipchoge. Yeah. yeah don't, get, don't get cocky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> humble. Right. Oh, man. Stay humble. Shit. Um, <laughs> what's something you, I hate to take a turn off of this tangent, which yeah. I love because yeah, I love was, talking about the, the, uh, elastic limits of human performance as alex hutchinson would would say um but i am curious to know more about the the business side of things um what's something you didn't expect would be challenging about owning your own jujitsu gym mm-hmm. and how did you deal with it was something i didn't expect um you know a lot of a lot of the uh legal aspect like dealing with the city mm. dealing with um i think that's one thing that that's challenging is yeah, yeah. i have i mean when you own a business right there's multiple layers to it mm-hmm. and everybody kind of you can't be good at everything it's impossible so you have certain things that you like to do i obviously love teaching class and, and love training jiu-jitsu um i i enjoy marketing um, I enjoy uh, community events. I enjoy um, being creative and thinking of other ways that we can uh, do a class or do an event or, you know, I enjoy those things. I do not, I like I, I enjoy creating curriculums yeah. and, and, and partnering up with schools and, 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 and stuff like that. But I don't like DIY. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to uh, fix a camera. Right. Like if my, if my security camera goes out, I, I'm impatient just to go up there and like try to talk to some tech support. <laughs> I hate that, that stuff. So, and, um, you know, some people like to do construction. They like to knock down a wall and, and put, uh, you know, put up a new, uh, platform for their mats or yeah. redo the back room so they can put up all these racks and weight rooms and like, like that for me, that just sounds terrible. Right. You didn't get into this because you had a penchant or desire for building or yes. for construction work, right? No. <laughs> right. right. So right. You know, is it like, Keiko's the, she, she's the DIY person in your She is the DIY. She's the handyman in our relationship. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. There's got to be one. <laughs> there's got to be one. So I think, you know, there's, there's always little things like that. Like, hey, we need um, our door stopper broke. I got to put a new door stopper in. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want to do that. Yeah, oh right. my uh blinds uh the, the 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 top of the blinds fell down like i have to go up there and put it back in on the ladder i don't want to do that yeah so there's all like the, all the stuff like those little things like all oh, my mats on the wall because the 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 um the moisture mm. is creating the walls to come off so i have to refix it i don't okay. want to do that right so anything like that <laughs> like i i don't i don't want to do it but i have to do it right, right? right. so i right. do it or i ask somebody like that no that's good at that to give me some ideas or do it with me right um, and so there's that and how do i deal with it like I don't know. I just do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just do it. I get pissed. Just or, suck it up. I just I, get really angry. <laughs> do it. I try to like, you know, do some 
uh, cyclic size. Right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Omar has yeah. been watching Josh's Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> My ego is just going higher yeah. and higher. Yeah. yeah, I gotta, you know. So I do that, and then yeah, with do, dealing with the city, like we had some ideas for expansion or. Um, and that kind of just didn't work out just because of how much of a headache, you know, like some of these legal yeah. things that we have to go through as a business, right. uh, zoning and contracting laws and, and, um, permits and right. all these things. Right. So I, I ask I ask that because I think a lot of would be or maybe even current jujitsu gym owners get into the business not thinking of those things yeah and it becomes a really big shock to them do you want me to okay um it becomes a really big shock to them and i wanted to i mean i guess what i'm hearing is if you are thinking about going into a business like this yeah. or any business for that matter it's probably helpful to very early on determine what it is that you really love doing and what you really hate doing and then figure out a way to outsource the things you really hate doing <laughs> early. Yeah. I mean, that's, um, and if that could be your wife, then great. But right. if it has to be somebody else, then that's okay too. Yeah. And I think that's, uh, that's a great strategy, right? Yeah. If you have somebody, if you have a, a friend that, um, has opened many gyms or owns a business and knows how to, to what process to go through, then you can, it'll save you a lot of headache. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing. Like you just have to steal the art from somebody who's there in construction. They know how to talk to the city. They know who to talk to. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to send 10 emails when I could just make one phone call. Right. Um, so yeah. Like how are you going to offload that work on somebody? Right. Like if you're starting off, you're probably going to have to do all the work yourself. Right. right. Unless, I mean, my, uh, my dream is to have somebody that manages the place. Right. And I just teach the classes and think of the big picture and manage right. multiple gyms. Um, but I don't have that yet, you know? So, right. um, if you can offload it or that's great, or you can just figure out how to make that easier by knowing who to talk to, which right. is great because of jujitsu, um, there's like somebody from every walk of life. On yeah. The so yeah, right. if you know how to, connect and talk you could probably find someone that can help you yeah this is something that we talked about in our last episode with alexis is like relationship building is of paramount importance regardless of the uh realm you're in mm -hmm. whether it's business or jujitsu or in her case mma or yeah. whatever is like being able to build those relationships and therefore a robust network is really really important so. Yeah, I've met so many people too, because like the jujitsu community is so small. Just by like going to these like coffee crew open mats and like um, just even going to like different gyms on Saturday. Like, um, oh yeah, I guess anybody watching this, go to Bay Area open mats on Instagram. Um, and I went there because uh, when I got back from traveling, I was trying to find like other places to go to open mats and everything. And they got like this recurring schedule in the Bay Area of all the gyms and times and everything. Mm -hmm. And um, super cool yeah it's just that like literally just like being in the same place as other people who like share this hobby with you there's like so much networking and like relationships mm -hmm. that happen and um and not just from like a like a business standpoint obviously but right but uh um but yeah well i um, think you know like at daruma dojo we have our open mat every every sunday 6 p.m right the whole the public's welcome and then when you go to these things like may have a conversation grab somebody's you know, you can make a point like every time I go, I'm going to have, I'm going to train with somebody I never trained before and yeah. then make a conversation and then ask them their IG tag. And that's what I do. Yeah. yeah you're like, hey, yeah, oh, man, you, I didn't know this guy's an artist. Like he right. does digital art. Yeah. I think that's so cool. And then all of a sudden your buddy needs some digital artwork and you're like, I actually met this guy. And then, so everyone kind of feeds each other. Yeah. Connected. Yeah. It's symbiosis. Yep. It's great. I mean, yeah. This podcast is an example of that. Cause I didn't know Josh was such a camera. I knew he was into cameras, but I didn't know how much he was into cameras until we started this. Uh -huh. And I feel like I'm learning a ton. Like every, every week I learn something new That's about really cool. filming or editing or lighting or whatever. So yeah. Yeah. Same yeah. thing in jujitsu. You just, yeah. Just yeah. learn. It's, it's all symbiotic relationships. Yeah. yeah like training. In the, 
you don't want to be that guy that's just stealing everything but not giving back right right yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to be yeah. you, you like give give value to other people and like value just comes back to you it's just yep. yeah you just give and then yeah uh, the more just, you give, the more you receive. Yeah, right? that's just so, how it works. Yeah. 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 On that note, I had a client once. He was uh, uh, Kabir. If he's listening, <laughs> name's Kabir. Uh -oh. He uh, no, no, no. Uh -oh. This is a good thing. Oh, okay, good. He taught me something about sales because I, I, when I first started my gym, I didn't know anything about sales. I had no idea what I was doing. I was just kind of living by the seat of my pants. Yeah. And that's a tough part about the gym. He was yeah right like communicating the value that you provide in a way that yeah. that you know. Um, shows whoever it is you're talking to that this is a good idea, right? Um, Kabir, so gonna be that one guy that's like, "Hey, can I just get twenty percent off?" Right? Like, uh, <laughs> no, why, yeah, what made you, yeah. How are you special? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so what what Kabir taught me? What Kabir taught me? I'll never forget. I'll never forget this because he was the he was like Ashley Furniture's number one salesman in the country cool. several years in a row. Oh, that's, and that's that's pretty badass. That's yeah, it's really badass and. He, uh, he, he literally, after some of our sessions would sit down with me and be like, pitch me, sell me right now. And I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't know. He was like, yeah, man, I was yeah. like, I don't have a, I don't have a script. I don't have anything. I don't know what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. And it, like, I've never felt more exposed mm -hmm. just like as a professional be like, yeah. I actually have no idea what I'm doing. Vulnerable. Yeah. Vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I'll never forget. He told me, he's like, sales is just guiding people to the thing that they want. And it, you do that by asking questions and you do that by learning about them and really genuinely taking an interest in their lives. And then he ended with the more people you affect, the bigger your check. And I was like, <laughs> fuck, he's right. Like that's, but that's what it is, right? It's like yeah, the right. more people you, you provide value for and the more people you can, you can help, right? The, the more it will come back to you. Symbiosis. <laughs> yes. It's all, there it is. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I think right. that's, uh, that's a really important. I think many people, uh, they think like salespeople manipulate, you know, I don't want to manipulate somebody. Like I don't want to like right. try to veer them in a certain direction. But like you said, like they're there for a reason to start. Mm -hmm. So they have that interest in your gym. Mm -hmm. right. And then if you are, um, trying to figure out why they're there and you're asking the questions right. and you're, you're going to try to uh, solve their problem. Right. And right. Figure and out how you could do that. Right, I think right. that's, I, I think that's the difference between good and bad sales is the intent, right? Is the intent to bamboozle or is the intent to actually help somebody solve their problem? Mm -hmm. Right. And if the intent is to actually help somebody solve your problem, it doesn't have to be used car sales mini. Right. 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 Cause I think that's the, that's the common trope is like, oh no, I'm, I don't, sales is icky. It's mm -hmm. manipulative. Like you said, and it's like, well, it doesn't have to be that way. Mm -hmm. And when we go into any of our sales conversations, like it is solely to understand what it is that the person wants. And if we don't have the thing that they want, we will push them somewhere else. Right. And it's like, I want what's best for this person, regardless of whether or not it's for me or not. And that's happened on multiple occasions. Like we had one person who's like, I want my 11 year old to work out with you. He's a hockey player and you know, this, that, and the other. And I'm like, we work with hockey players, but we don't really work with 11 year olds. I do know somebody who works with 11 year olds. He's very, very good. And I push him there and he was like, yeah, thank you so much. Like, this is, this is great. Like it works out for us. It's near our house. It's, you know, everything works. Mm -hmm. Also, I saw you do jujitsu and you work with jujitsu athletes. I actually used to do jujitsu and I do want to get back into it. And when I do, I'm coming to you. I'm like, great. There you go. See, yeah. and it's because I like, I didn't try to like, pull the hood over his eyes it was like listen like we're not the best place for you right now if it ever comes to the time or, or the time ever comes that we are the best place we'd love to have you but for now this is where it goes and i think that's what that's what determines whether or not it's like good or bad quote sales so 100 yeah cool um i was gonna ask real quick um because you had mentioned the legal thing um sure. and you were mostly talking about like the permits and all that kind of stuff yeah um but with that recent case that i think everybody now in jujitsu is familiar with about the waivers mm -hmm. not meaning anything there was yeah. the the case about the um with the the henry gracie case where he came in and and talked about it and everything yeah um, the guy broke his neck yeah the guy yeah mm -hmm. um yeah i guess for people we we all know what, what we're talking about but for people watching um uh um, I don't know all the specific details, but a student broke his neck during a back take, a rolling back take, and there was a whole case about it. Um, and then 
where they were trying to find out if the gym was culpable. Um, and one of the things that people started getting worried about was whether the waivers students sign like mean anything. Um, does that, did that ever come up to you? Like, like in your mind when you saw that case happen where you did, did did that, did that affect you at all? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh I, I saw that and I was like, wow, like that's how extreme it could get. Uh Like this is serious. Like I have my gym and if something like that happens, right. Then my gym's under it, you know? And like you said, this is something that I've, I've known, you know, about the waivers and like how much value they, how much they, how much they really carry. right? Right. And so it just reminded me on, what I could do as a gym owner to do my best to provide a safe environment and to educate my coaches and to educate myself and to educate my students, you know, in fact, like when that happened, like, I think I taught that rolling back take all week or something. Like we went over it. Like, this is what happened. Like, let's, let's do it. Let's, let's, let's see how let's, here's a couple of variations on how you could do it the right way so that people are not afraid of it. Right. Cause you know, they know how to do it correctly. Right. Oh, that's, a, that's such a good way to look at it. That's like teaching. I don't know if that's in the hot take section. It's, though, uh, is that, is there <laughs> no, I don't think so. For lower belts? Oh, uh, we can touch it on it. We got plenty of hot takes there. Oh. Go for it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Go for it. <laughs> oh, I was going to ask um, the question, leg locks for lower belts. Then there's a there's an argument that they should be taught, for example. There's an argument that they shouldn't. Um, what was your take on that? Well, heel I, hooks specifically, I think, because those are the most. Yeah, right, in, yeah. My, in my gym. Heel hooks are allowed no gi, blue belts and above. Got it. Um, straight ankles, knee bars, toe holds, white belts and above. Got it. Um, and I, I, I see the other side. Like, hey, I know I know black belts that teach heel hooks the first day. Like, mm. this guy is trial class. Here's a heel hook. Like, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I know guys that, like, don't even teach that stuff. Right? Mm. So... I'm, I, in my, in my point of view and what I feel are the foundations of jujitsu, I say, I think that that's not really necessary for somebody at right in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Um, blue belt. All right. Now you're going to maybe get into some tournaments where it might be legal, right? Blue belt or purple belt level, right? right? Right. Grappling industries. Right. Exactly. But how many white belt levels do allow heel hooks? I don't know of any. Unless you're doing the absolute at grappling industries. Right. Yeah. Right. right. So right. It's, it's, I don't think it's um, high on their priority list. Right. So yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So hot takes. Uh, free association, your opinion, no right or wrong. I'm going to say something. You say something back. You got 20 seconds to get your thoughts out. Holy shit. Okay. <laughs> right. everybody's like all right cool 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 and i say 20 seconds they're like uh <laughs> all right are you ready yeah so and i'll and i'll say go yeah yeah and yeah he's gonna ask the question i say go and start right, the timer here. all right and you can also skip any question that you don't want to answer you can say you can yeah. say next i'll do my best i'm i'm, I'm game let's do it all right okay ready uh-huh. hot takes hot takes all right, who's the best competitor of all time in the gi and no gi? Go. Go. Hydra Gracie in the gi. Gordon uh, Ryan, no gi. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's a good take. Cool. Ready? I love that take. Yeah. Okay. BJJ warm ups. Go. Keep them applicable to techniques. I love this. Can you elaborate? <laughs> um, I don't. I don't think squat jumps are that important, but shrimps are, break falls are, forward rolls are. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> nice. All right. Where's the best BJJ being practiced right now Go. overall? Maybe in Southern California. Anywhere San, in particular? San Diego. San Diego, LA. Okay. That seems to be the general consensus. The consensus yeah. There, yeah. 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 I keep wanting to say Austin, but I guess that's like only really no gi. I mean, they have the B team and New Wave, right? I mean, yeah. they're yeah. they're like the two biggest gyms in the world. But I think overall, 
when it, I think when it comes to like the, uh, the qu- quantity yeah. and quality, yeah. it's be down south. I mean, Art of Jiu-Jitsu, yeah. Hato's, Gracie Baja. I mean, just those three alone. Yeah. yeah. They got Legion. Legion, Legion. is down there. Yeah. 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 There's a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Uh, we talked about leg locks for low belts. Let's move on. B team versus new wave. Is that real or fake? Go. <laughs> That's hundred percent real. <laughs> okay. So they really don't like each other. Oh no, they, they do, but they're definitely competitors and rivals. Okay. Yeah. It's I, not fabricated in any way. Uh, th- there's probably some resentments there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. 20 seconds. I think, uh, I think there's levels to everything. Right. So, yeah. um, probably some good marketing involved exactly. in there. Right. 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 Got it. Yeah. Got okay. It. Uh, gee or no gee? Go. Uh, gee. Ooh, that's a hot take. Traditional. <laughs> traditional. Yeah. Traditional. Yeah. Okay. Coming from a judoka as well. Yeah. Makes sense. Last one. Ready? Combat jujitsu. Go. It's better than watching the ones where they fight in the car. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Car jiu jitsu. That's, that's yeah. the, I love that. That's your like. Uh, that was great. Yeah, I didn't great. expect that that's response. A, one step above car jitsu. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's. I think it's cool. Um, it's it's a it's like a uh, it's like in between jitsu and MMA, right? Okay. It's almost like pancreation. Mm. Oh like, yeah. I kicked this camera. Is it okay? Oh yeah, you're good. Yeah, right. yeah, it looks this good. One here. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> So, because you have so many damn cameras, like, <laughs> specify yeah, which one. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, I, you know, it hasn't, I don't, has, mm. I don't know how much it's taken off, right? Like, is it, is it huge? Is it that big? I don't, it doesn't seem like it's really taken off. No. I mean, yeah. people are doing it. I think, I think if you want to do MMA, I think it's a great <sighs> stepping stone. Okay. Yeah. Um, but it's sort of this weird, like, stepchild situation yeah yeah it's weird step yeah it's, i don't mean that to anybody who has stepchildren by the way. It's, it's, it's i don't know of, if that's the analogy it's kind but of like, i understand i, I understand oh. <laughs> wait yeah okay stepchild that's okay all right anyway yeah, it's the, the the black sheep of the family yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. okay it, it's, it reminds yeah. me of um you know let's say your friend's a virgin you have them have sex with a, a prostitute Okay, so where are we like, going with this? We, yeah, okay. this is this let's, taking a turn. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. <laughs> Keep going. Let's hear it. You're like, okay. hey, he lost his virginity, but did he really lose his virginity? Ah, I see exactly where he went with that. <laughs> <laughs> that is not where I expected this to go. Oh, man. Yeah, so this guy, like, okay, he's kind of doing MMA, and he's kind of getting ready for to go out there, you know. So. But does it count? Right, it's a great. Right, movie. right, 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 right. right. Okay. That was beautiful. <laughs> wow, well said. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, let's uh, let's leave it here. Before we head out, where can people find you? What do you want people to do? Um, I want people to train jujitsu, and if they want to train in in Sunnyvale, we have Daruma Dojo. It's a uh, five forty eight South Murphy Avenue, downtown Sunnyvale. Um, you can find me on Instagram, Team Daruma Dojo. On YouTube, Team Druma Dojo, Team Druma Dojo.com, Facebook, Twitter, X, whatever the hell you call it, uh, <laughs> TikTok. Uh, we have our, we have our own podcast just coming out. We're trying to be like these guys here at Thanks for the Role, but we're, <laughs> we're on our way. Uh, Druma Dojo Dialogues. So yeah. Cool. Nice. You can see me all over the place. Oh, I like the alliteration, Druma yeah. Dojo Dialogue. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. It's beautiful. All right. Thanks for listening to another episode, everyone. If you enjoy this podcast, like, comment, and subscribe on YouTube. Follow us at Thanks for the Roll on Instagram and TikTok. Give us five stars and write us a review wherever you listen and share this episode with someone you think would benefit from it. See you next time. Thanks for the roll. Thanks for the roll. Thanks for the roll. Nice. <laughs> I think, it, is he the first person to actually say thanks for the roll? No.